Good morning. Thank you. Everybody, uh, I'm Patrick Quinn Graham. Uh, I have done iOS development in the past, but these days I am actually a DevOps engineer uh, at Topbox. We are a Vonage company. We do WebRTC, uh, we make SDKs for iOS, Android, Web, Linux, lots of things. Uh, we have lots of moving pieces, and doing things manually is it's painful, it's time-consuming, and it's totally error-prone. Uh, why are we here this morning? Uh, I think I promised a journey. Uh, that might have been too much. Uh, we're going to walk through some tools, um, but uh, just quickly, the other room is the one with uh, talk about synthesizers. So. Uh, maybe we just go there? No? Oh, okay. I'll do this talk then. Um, so, this is a relatively familiar site to most of us, I'm sure. Uh, Xcode, it's getting a little darker this year. Um, some people like that, some people prefer uh, black text on white screens. I don't judge them. Um, but fundamentally, Xcode is it's a Mac application. It's very much geared around using a mouse and you know, interactive input. It's scriptable to an extent, but I want to look more in this thing, terminal window. Uh, OK, we are still going to use Xcode. We're just not going to use the GUI. The first tool, uh, it was in the title of the talk, so it makes sense to start there is Xcode build. Uh, just quickly, when you see monospaced uh, text like this, uh, it will usually be a terminal command. I will put a hash at the start if it's an actual command rather than a comment. Um, what can you do with Xcode build? Uh, I mean, I guess maybe, obviously. Uh, you can build. You can build your app. You can build frameworks. You can <coughs> since you can pretty much do anything with a script phase uh, in an Xcode project, you could build your website. Uh, but you can do it from the command line instead. You can also do your tests. Tests are awesome. We write them, don't we? Good. At least one person does. Uh, and not only do we write them, but we remember to run them. Like maybe in a git pre-commit hook. Uh, but last year, last year I did a talk here, in this very same spot actually, uh, about continuous integration. Uh, and that pretty much relied on using Xcode build and Xcode build test. Uh, yeah. I kind of skipped off some stuff, so let's, let's dive a little bit into how to actually tell Xcode build where to do things. Um, you have to tell it what scheme you're, you're going to uh, build or test. And then you have to tell it where. How do you tell it? Let's start with real devices, because real devices are fun. Uh, if you're like the lovely people working on Procreate, you have to for Metal. Um, the, uh, the destination specifier this wonderful key value pair. Um, if you have no spaces, then it's really easy. Uh, on an iOS device, you can either refer to it by name or with its UUID. Uh, I prefer UUID, UUID in, uh, in infrastructure, but that's just because it tends not to change. Uh, if you're dealing with a Mac application, then, I mean, you, it's kind of much simpler. Uh, what about on a simulator? Because simulators are great because they don't require physical devices. They're much easier to deal with. They don't tend to crash when you're, well, they do crash, but they crash in a way that you can recover uh, much easier than having someone in a different country go and plug and unplug something. Uh, there, you can either specify a simulator ID or based on a name and OS combination. Uh, how do you get the simulator ID? Uh, or even a list of the simulators that are available. We'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, 
there's, there's many different ways of specifying these destinations. Um, grab the slides afterwards. Be, the link will be at the end and it was at the start. Um, Joe, who's probably here somewhere at the conference, I'm pretty sure I saw him yesterday, uh, wrote a really good post and that link will take you there. Uh, if you are using uh, Xcode workspaces, which if you're using CocoaPods or, or just grouping things together, uh, you will need to specify a workspace to use. And conveniently, Xcode build lets you do that, surprisingly, with a logically named argument of workspace. Uh, two, two little extra bonus features here. Um, you might have used this inside Xcode. It hides under the, uh, the build menu of build for testing. Uh, this is great if you are uh, if you're using Travis CI with matrixes or Jenkins pipelines, where you can build once and then run tests in parallel uh, with multiple workers uh, without having to rebuild. Uh, hey, there's another link. Yay. Uh, the lovely people at Apple actually wrote some relatively good documentation on the Xcode build. And TN2339. Uh, covers all of this stuff. It, it also provides useful information for future stuff in the talk. Uh, okay, IPAs. Do, uh, does everyone know what an IPA is? Beer. Uh, <laughs> I'm not talking about the beer. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> and I'm not providing free beer. It's too early. Uh, IPAs in this context are everyone's favorite uh, different extension for a zip file uh, as a way of packaging up an iOS app. Uh, to make an IPA from the command line, uh, you have to make an archive. There's a few command line arguments. You need to specify the destination so that it knows to build a iOS, uh, an iOS rather than an iOS simulator version of the app. Uh, and then you export it much like you would through the GUI in Xcode. Uh, the one pack here is this wonderful exportoptions.plist. I don't know why they require a plist for this rather than just providing more arguments. But the IP, uh, that plist basically specifies whether it's a IPA for the App Store or for ad hoc distribution. Um, the, you can also, you also specify the team ID here so that it gets signed appropriately. Uh, you can even upload to App Store Connect using the command line, using the wonderful AL tool. Uh, we're also going to use, I mean here, the downside is you're uh, specifying a username and password on the command line. Uh, so be careful when testing this that it doesn't end up in your uh, shell history. Uh, bonus here is the wonderful little tool XC Run, which, yay, uh, as its own documentation says, finds and executes the named command line tool from the active developer directory. So if you have Xcode betas and the current stable release of Xcode, XC Run, um, uses whatever you currently have selected for your command line tool and saves you from finding tools like uh, AL tool or later sim control. And hey, how do you tell it which version of Xcode to use? This is really important if you're using, uh, using multiple betas especially or if you're using developer uh, continuous integration where you need to test with both a um, betas and production releases. Uh, you can find out what the current version is and how to change to a different one. Bonus is a typo. That should be a single hyphen. Which, which brings us to the lovely sim control. Uh, earlier I promised to provide a list of the available simulators and uh, I, I didn't lie then. Uh, sim control lets you list, create, poke, generally manage the simulators on your machine. Uh, it's sometimes a bit wordy, 
um, you can get a list of the current device, uh, sorry, the current simulators that are configured on your machine. Uh, delightfully calls them devices. I guess they're simulated devices. Uh, if you want to make your own simulators, say if you want to create uh, different simulators to test different parts of the same, or like pairs of applications, or even if you just need to have two simulators running at the same time with the same device type. To do that, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need to pick a device type. These are iPhone 10, iPhone 8, uh, the different watch sizes, Apple TV generations, iPads, etc. cetera. Uh, and you're going to need to uh, use a runtime. A uh, simulator runtime is effectively an OS or SDK version. Once you have those two things, you just issue XE run, sim control, create, name your simulator, give it a device type and a runtime, and it will give you back a UID because Apple loves UUIDs. Uh, once you have a simulator, you can install an app. Uh, you get an app just by building it using Xcode build run, uh, sorry, Xcode build uh, without doing an archive. And then you can install it and you can even launch it in the simulator. You can't, can't really do that on physical devices outside of testing. But we'll get back to that too. Uh, you can also open URLs uh, if your app supports uh, URLs. Uh, great for testing the various ways that your app could be invoked from other applications. Uh, it's also useful if you need to pull things into Safari on an iOS simulator for automated testing there. And hey, I have another link. <coughs> uh, yeah, I could probably do a much longer talk on simulator control. There's APIs for starting and stopping and restarting and erasing and pairing watches and pairing watches, uh, copying stuff in and out through the clipboard. But I'm not going to keep going. Uh, grab the slides afterwards, click this lovely link. Uh, once you've been doing anything with iOS for 10 years, you develop a few weird tricks. Um, here, here are a couple of mine. Uh, so I mentioned running an app on the device. If typically what you want to do is run your tests from Xcode, uh, from XE tests or similar, uh, but what if that's not what you want to do? You want to do something where you just run your app. Maybe your app is, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a host for a remote control test framework that you've written because you need to test things on lots of devices at once. We, I mean, you can't exactly, um, but, but you can cheat. Uh, you can run the run loop. Uh, in this case, test runner is an actual test inside the, the test scheme. And, and all it does is say, run loop, run for the next you know, 100 milliseconds or so, and then come back. Uh, it effectively blocks forever but still allows the main thread to execute. Uh, the, the, the what loop? Uh, if you're not familiar with the run loop, uh, you, you kind of can get away without knowing about it, uh, but learning it and, it's, and how it affects the way that your app works and how blocking it affects your app's performance uh, means that it's worth doing. You can also, when spinning up additional threads, run your own run loops. Uh, okay. When dealing with automated testing, uh, it's sometimes useful to specify or inject strings at runtime or other uh, values. Uh, this is how you get it into Objective C. Uh, in addition to the regular uh, arguments to Xcode build, it takes a bunch of environment variable kind of things on the end. Um, that is effective, yeah, it's effectively a C macro. Uh, Swift 
well, okay. Firstly, for Swift, you can bring in the Objective-C or C macros using a bridging header. Uh, or if you don't need uh, dynamic strings, uh, flags work great. And here's how you pass in those. Uh, code signing. I'm sure it's everyone's favorite part of iOS development, uh, especially now that app review's gotten really short. Uh, when you're using Xcode, Xcode kind of does a lot of it for you. Uh, that's awesome. Doesn't always work out great in continuous integration environments. Uh, or if you just have something weird like uh, an open, well, not, op not weird really, uh, open source where if you specify a team, that doesn't really work for anyone else. Uh, if you need to specify the team, you whack development team on the end of Xcode build. Uh, there's also a flag for disabling automatic signing, uh, but you don't always need that. Uh, custom keychains. Uh, in my case, in the continuous integration environment, I didn't want the, uh, the certificates that could sign apps for distribution to be in the general keychain where anyone could access them. Uh, I also, that keychain locked every time that computer was left unattended, which was all the time. So making your own keychain is really simple. In keychain access, uh, file, new keychain. Once you have a keychain, you can drag and drop certificates from other keychains into it, lock the keychain, and now you can copy that keychain onto other computers. Uh, we use uh, we use Chef uh, to get the files onto individual machines, but your CI system could pull it down through whatever secrets mechanism it has. Once you have that, loading a keychain so you can use it involves the delightful list keychain command. Who knows why it's list? List. Uh, you unlock a keychain. Hey, this one's logically named. Uh, again, this allows you to pass a password in on the command line. Be careful with your shell history. Uh, if you are, uh, because signing happens at the end of your build phase, if your builds take a long time, which depending on what's involved and how much swift there is, can be painful. And you can easily end up with your keychain locking before your build starts. Uh, so if you unlock it before the build, build starts, keychains locked, build fails. Unhappy developers. Change it using this. Uh, cool. I mean, this kind of falls into the weird trick, but there's this, this wonderful library. It's kind of written, I think, originally to let Linux users talk to iPhones uh, using USB mux uh, and the other kind of ways of connecting to iOS devices. But it happens to work pretty well on the Mac uh, if you get it from Homebrew. It does things like let you get a list of devices that are attached uh, with their UUIDs. Uh, you can get device information. Now, in this case, this, this particular command will give it to you in plist form, which is great for programmatic consumption. Um, but without, without the dash x, it gives you this. So you can see um, that when I ran this, that the device was an iPhone, uh, an iPhone 10. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say that, but you can work that out from the product type. Uh, and you can see that it is running iOS 12 uh, and the MAC address of the Wi-Fi. Uh, useful stuff for trying to work out what devices are attached to your CI server. Uh, you can do more with it, but short talk. Um, and I mean, these aren't weird. These are not weird. So I called them the grab bag section. Uh, XC pretty. If you've run Xcode build <laughs> much, you know that it out its output tends to look kind of like this. Uh, the Xcode build team don't believe in color at all. And trying to work out from here what tests ran and whether they passed or not. No. 
Piping it through XC pretty gets you this hopefully much easier to, to understand. Probably still hard to read, but that's OK. Uh, the important part is I can see much, uh, much more easily that through that green and, and spacing around things that who knew spacing could help? Uh, that my two unit tests passed and that my UI tests, which are a, a separate group of tests, um, also passed. Uh, and lastly, I don't think I could do a talk about automation uh, and builds on iOS without mentioning Fastlane. Uh, that's their tagline, uh, tagline that they claim it's at automation done right. Uh, they have tools to do things like generating all the screenshots that you'd need across all the different device types, uh, managing beta and app store releases. I mean, you can do that using Xcode build as I demonstrated earlier in the talk, and that's effectively what Fastlane is doing. Um, but it's worth knowing how it works first. Uh, I'm only going to talk about one, one tiny part of Fastlane here, and that's certificates, and, or code signing specifically, uh, because that's one thing that is still hard to automate yourself. Uh, worth investigating Fastlane's code signing support, uh, and also for provisioning profiles. So provisioning, provisioning profiles have been something that I have largely avoided, or largely avoided success at automating. Uh, outside of using Fastlane. Uh, on machines where I don't do that, I inevitably end up copying um, provisioning profiles around by hand, and that's really boring. Uh -huh.